Hey folks, Phil B Man here. Uh, Want to get a little bit more into this question of what the oxalic is doing to these colonies in winter. If you recall, I showed you putting oxalic straps in to haul colonies the day they went into the wintering shed. And then uh, about a week ago, when I first started playing with my new thermal camera, I noticed that those colonies were pretty wound up. They had a much uh, more significant heat signature than the uh, control colonies they were next to. And that got us thinking a bit about what's going on with the colonies we have in the uh, official experiment uh, where we are um, checking uh, but we got 100 colonies in the experiments, a uh, high and low dose of these Roxanne strips, and then a uh, sham strip, which is like the same cardboard strip, but with no oxalic on it, and then uh, an apovar strip on some other controls. So we've got gold standard treatment, sham control treatment, and then a high and a low dose. And those went in... Uh, I'm sorry, just my cardboard notes here, October 24th to 26th. And then mine that I showed you went in November 7th. So about a week separation from the official experiment to the uh, to when I did my own little informal thing. And so you saw that those colonies, uh, my colonies were wound up. I went back into the shed that day uh, and saw that though the experiment colonies were also significant heat signature, and I'll show you some of that. And then we, uh, now or a month later, you'd think it would start to taper off, and all, and uh, we gotta think also about making sure we're not just imagining, you know, our own effects. So like those experiment colonies Twice a week, they're getting sticky boards pulled. There's a bit more action going on. They're all on the top of the stacks. Uh, so it's possible we're measuring something that's not real. It's also possible, uh, so that's why we'd compare them to mine. I put the strips in, no one's touched them since. So the human disturbance or the smell of the Crisco on the sticky boards or anything else, None of that is happening with those 10 colonies that I just uh, have my own little thing going on. Um, also want to make sure that uh, we kind of have normal wintering conditions. We've had a pretty warm fall or even early winter here in Manitoba, but we finally got some snow on the ground and some cold temperatures. So my buildings are absolutely rock dead on that sort of five Celsius that we we're looking for, for optimum wintering conditions. So as you can see, uh, sun is barely over the horizon. It's winter time. And uh, I, I can wear a hoodie, but I wouldn't want to stand here too long. It's, it's good and cold. Uh, I think temperature is about minus five right now. So we got minus five air coming in and maybe even colder because my both of my sheds draw from kind of uh, the reserved air spaces of my storage building. So it's kind of an average of yesterday's high and low temperature. So it's probably minus eight, minus 10. And uh, so they're plenty cool. So we are not measuring um, anything abnormal. So let's go and have a look. First, we'll look at what these colonies looked like a couple weeks ago. And then we'll look at what they look like now. And we will, for those people who stick around for the whole video, we'll get down into individual colonies, hot, cold, or hot, warm, cold, I guess we'll grade them, and whether they're treatment or control. Okay, so here we are in the bee shed. Now we do have colonies. Those are a couple of real monsters on the end here. Those are, those are too big to even become singles, so they stay doubles. Some warm ones. If you look down the row, you see uh, third hives out. Three in a row that are stacked up pretty, uh, and they're pretty warm. And then offset one stack over. Let's go have a look. 
these are the ones that you can see the extra tag on here. You can't read it on the thermal camera, but that says oxalic. So there's one, two, three. And then here is one and two. So that's the five from this side of the pallets. And you know, comparing that to what the colonies look like, there's, you know, it's not, uh, it's, you know, lots of colonies have a little bit of heat showing. And we hope those are all real beauties. Okay, here we are in the big shed. Most of the hives look pretty quiet and happy. There's three there that are jumping out. Let's go see if those are the oxala treatment hives. One here. Oh, look. This one is. That one is bees out the front door and the bottom one is one two three we could see those from a mile away with this camera that's pretty cool oh and then there's another one and here's another one some interesting observations with the new thermal camera i have the top row of these hives is the ones in our interdoor oxalic treatment, look how hot they are compared to the rest that they're stacked above. And I've got a happening right across the board here. Got quite a few rosies atop the on all of these, the top hives are in the trial. That's why we stacked them on the top. A couple notable exceptions there. It'd be interesting to know if those are the dull or the, the ones that didn't get oxalic in the trial. So consistently shedding way more heat, which must mean way more activity inside those hives. All right, now here we are with the experiment hives. And so there's, they're stacked four high. The bottom three colonies are not in the experiment, only the top row is. That's how we can have access to them all winter. And so you can see that there is, they are some that jump out as being warmer than nearly all of them and there's some that are not. It's my theory that the ones that are cooler are the controls. So we're gonna walk down the row. This is row one. And we'll just grade them as we go. So we'll call hive one, probably normal. Hive two, warm. Hive three, cool or normal. I four, probably normal. Getting to be warmer here. Five, six, quite cool. Okay, now we got a hot one there. And it's the bees are spilling out the front. That's seven, eight, just a few at the bottom. Nine, pretty warm. Ten. 11, quite hot in the handle, you can see that, where the wood is thinner. And the last one is a uh, cool. Now, I'll have to go to the, the map after and check which ones are controls and which are not. Next row. Five, one, normal, five, two. Let's call that normal. Three, warm. Four, quite cool. Five, normal. Six, normal. Seven, pretty hot. Eight, normal. 
9 normal, 10 normal, 11, 12 is normal. You can see the crack between the two hives where there's uh, less cooling shows pretty warm. And I would say these hives have cooled off. Here's a really hot one here. That one is... Uh, the contrast fades out as you get too close. That's interesting. One, two, three, four, five are all warm. Next is cool. Six is cool. Warm. Seven. Eight. Warm. Nine is pretty cool. Ten is pretty cool. 11 warmer 12 is quite warm you can kind of get on these ones as you can see multiple sides or on a corner you can see that you can probably pretty much guess where the cluster is snuggled right up against the outside box from the outside second one in pretty warm couple cooler ones that is one two three four fifth one's pretty warm six cooler seven eight is good and hot nine ten is cool eleven cool twelve is hot coming to the next row now we got some warm right across the board Those ones are real wound up. I'll step back so you can compare that to the ones underneath. So I think that's a pretty pronounced effect. All the colonies in the study. So we'll have to, that'd be a good row to compare. Is every colony in, in this row got treatment? Next row. Warm. Oh, there's one there centered right there quite a bit cooler I think that is one two three four fifth one in six ones warmer then cooler quite cold and then two warm ones 